Welcome to a new session and uh, we will try today to uh, uh, discuss the vesicular bullous diseases. I make those videos uh, to help you to understand uh, in a simple way uh, dermatopathology because uh, like I always uh, say that when I started learning about uh, these uh, topics it was very intimidating and challenging learning about the names and about the definitions so my intention from doing those videos is uh, hopefully uh, to be helpful to somebody who's starting new or who wants to uh, uh, learn those topics in a different way so uh, i like to think of the vesicular bullous disease as the bubbly diseases of the skin and that's why i included here and in other uh, slides a lot of uh, soap bubbles so, uh, as always, we uh, are using uh, Whedon's uh, textbook uh, 2021, and uh, by now, hopefully, you, you are familiar with this uh, division. We, we spoke about the epidermis patterns and then the dermal-epidermal uh, junction. Uh, today, we will speak about the vesicular bullus, and we say that there is blistering formation in uh, the epidermis or beneath the epidermis. We then uh, likes to use a three-tier system to understand those diseases, which I, sh I think is very helpful for us to follow the same pattern because uh, if you try to learn like all of them in a, a not systematic order, uh, you will get confused with a lot of them. So I think using this uh, three-tier system is very helpful. So the first one is the anatomic level of the split. So where does the bullet happen, basically, in uh, relation to the epidermis? The other thing is the mechanism that is responsible for the split. And the third thing is what type of cells that we see in uh, those uh, bullet formation. So in terms of the anatomy, uh, we have four levels. Uh, the subcorneal or intracorneal, uh, level and then we have the epidermal or within the epidermis intraepidermal and then we have the suprabasilar or above the basilar layer and then we have the subepidermal uh, formation in terms of the mechanism uh, we should ask ourselves three questions uh, is there a spongiosis is there a cantholysis or ballooning formation and we, we spoke about spongiosis, and if you remember, we said like if the spongiosis uh, is very severe, it can cause a bulle formation, and that's what uh, is important to differentiate wherever you have like a disease that, or biopsy that has bulle formation, you should ask yourself, is it because of a spongiosis, or there is like ballooning formation, or a cantholysis? The third, uh, a question you should ask yourself is the neutrophils or eosinophils or lymphocytes which is predominant because if you look into uh, those lesions some of them they have mixed inflammatory infiltrate but you have to ask yourself what is the more uh, predominant uh, cell type that is affecting those uh, lesions so we start with the intra and subcorneal blisters and I like to divide them based on uh, kind of a group groups. Uh, so the first one is empitigo and staphylococcal scalded skin and uh, dermatophytosis, basically infection. Uh, rarely you will get or you will see uh, empitigo or uh, staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, but for sure you will see a lot of uh, biopsies where the fungal etiology is the main etiology that is causing a blistering formation in the uh, corneal layer. The other group is the autoimmune category. All these diseases, they have autoimmune mechanism involved, meaning there is autoantibody attacking either the epidermis or the basement membrane that causing blister formation. The third group is the one that happens in uh, uh, children and most commonly when you see biopsy is from uh, uh, 
a kid, you should think about those uh, three diseases. We talked about uh, Ajib and Miliaria. We, we said that in Ajib there is like uh, antibi uh, antibiotics or uh, medication involved. And in Miliaria crystallina, we, we talked about uh, involvement of the sweat gland. We said the obstruction happens in the top layer, which causes the formation of the uh, blister. So uh, we go back to those like three questions. And in the first uh, group, we see acantholysis and neutrophils. In the dermatophytosis, uh, we see uh, neutrophils. So anytime you see neutrophils in the corneal layer, always you should do GMS staining. In the perfigus foliaceous group, uh, uh, here we see a cantholysis uh, with neutrophils. In some cases, you see also eosinophils. The uh, diff staining will help you in this group to identify the diagnosis. Hertiform uh, perfigus, usually we see spongiosis with eosinophils, and sometimes we see neutrophils. The split here will be a little bit lower than the previous two, and diff uh, preparation will help you to identify the diagnosis. Subcorneal pustular dermatosis is, as the name implies, there is pustular formation, and here we see a cantholysis in uh, addition to the main cell type is neutrophils, but also you can see eosinophils and pustules. If you do a uh, diff in this group, usually is negative. IgA formation or IgA and IgG pumphigus, usually we see a cantholysis and the spongiosis. The, the cell type uh, usually is mixed, but here the, the pustular formation is usually intraepidermal, and when you do diff, usually diff uh, staining will help you with IgA preparation to identify this diagnosis. Infantile acropustulosis, usually you see uh, acantholysis with neutrophils and eosinophils in addition to the pustule formation. Erythema toxicum neonatorium usually affects the hair unit, so you will see uh, folliculitis with eos in addition to uh, pustules and the, the blister formation usually subcorneal or intraepidermal. A transient neonatal pustular melanosis, this is an interesting disease where you see increase in pigmentation in the basal and the suprabasal layer in addition to the pustular formation uh, which is filled with neutrophils, sometimes eosinophils, and found usually subcorneal or intraepidermal. So uh, I will try to use uh, today uh, this uh, system where I show you clinical and pathology uh, picture. And if you want, you can pause the video where you try to guess the diagnosis. So it will be kind of like a quiz for you or try to keep you uh, interactive with the presentation. So this is an impetigo, most commonly uh, found in kids, I think most medical students will be able to identify this crust uh, looks like yellow or uh, they used to say in the books uh, honey crust uh, formation and as we said in impetigo you will see the uh, blister in uh, the corneal layer filled with uh, uh, organisms, gram positive cocci in this case and uh, neutrophils. This is a nice example of empetigo. This is staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. And rarely you will see this in the lab because of the, uh, the blister formation uh, in the corneal layer with a little bit of neutrophils and organisms. But rarely those uh, lesions, if uh, this is very rare disease, but if they make it to the lab, they will be lost in preparation, as you would expect that uh, if you make a biopsy here, the corneal layer will not make it through the preparation. So most commonly, you will receive just the part that without the corneal layer. So here we see in the trunk of this uh, patient, a lot of uh, lesions that uh, forming like bullae, and then they burst because they are superficial. So you can tell clinically if the bullet or if the disease is 
the blister involving the superficial layer or the corneal layer, usually it bursts very easily and leaves a crust formation. Uh, if you look into the biopsy, you will see the bullet formation is a little bit lower than the previous two examples we, we saw in the granular cell layer or beneath the corneal uh, cell layer. And usually those bullet formation is filled with fibrin and rare uh, neutrophils and usually are sterile. So you will not see uh, in uh, opposite to uh, the impetigo or the infection disease, you will not see organisms in the bullet. So these bullet will be sterile. The other thing is the acantholysis. This is very unique for this disease. So whenever you see bullet formation up high, in addition to acantholysis, you should think of this diagnosis. If you do a DIF preparation for IgG and C3, you will see this uh, uh, intercellular staining, and the reason is the IgG4 is attacking the dismoglyene 1, and usually those uh, lesions are, uh, they spare the oral cavity because of the dismoglyene 3 is uh, found in the oral cavity instead of dismoglyene 1. So this is pemphigus foliaceus. The other lesion is also associated with pemphigus foliaceus. As you see this rash uh, at the cheek of this lady that looks like SLE type of rash where you see is crusted and sometimes is misdiagnosed as uh, impetigo or uh, seborrheic dermatitis or rosacea or eczema. Uh, it was named after uh, uh, Senior and Asher, and usually uh, they use this uh, name uh, uh, syndrome uh, to refer to pemphigus lupus erythematosus because when they studied this disease, they thought there is an, an overlap between uh, SLE and pemphigus foliaceus, but later on, uh, I think the studies found that it is a localized form with better uh, prognosis of pemphigus uh, foliaceous. If you look on a biopsy, you will see the same features you see in pemphigus foliaceous. And uh, on this preparation of IgG, you will see uh, uh, both features that you see in uh, uh, pemphigus and the shaggy basement membrane that is typical for lupus erythematosus. So, a pemphigus erythematosus. So we finished the first group and then we move on to the intraepidermal blisters. In this group we have the spongiotic blistering, we have the palmoplantar pustulosis. Uh, the pa palmoplantar pustulosis also it has, uh, in addition to the pustules, we see spongiosis uh, which is uh, the blister is filled with neutrophils and uh, mono uh, sites in addition to the other uh, areas of the epidermis. Also, we see focal parakeratosis in those lesions, but also the location is important to make this diagnosis, palmoplantar. Amicrobial is usually uh, pustulosis, but also uh, has another unique feature is the autoimmune disease. In this condition, the, the main features we see on histology, the spongiform acanthosis, which also uh, the cell type has also neutrophils in addition to the parakeratosis. Erosive postular dermatosis of the leg also has unique two features that happens in the leg and also there is ulceration. In addition to the postular formation, we see a spongiform acanthosis and the cell type is usually mixed. The viral blistering diseases are unique because of the ballooning degeneration, and I'll show you a few examples of that in addition to the acantholysis. And usually the cell type in those groups are mixed. Epidermolysis bullosa, this localized type or simplex type, usually we see the split in the mid or upper epidermis. And the unique feature here is the dyskeratosis but not always present, sometimes it's present, which would be helpful. A friction blister is usually mechanical trauma to the skin that cause the blister information, and usually the blister will be under the granular cell layer, 
and uh, uh, underneath the blister formation usually the cells is edematous, uh, pale and they have like degeneration uh, changes. So we start the first example here we see blisters at the trunk of this patient and when you do biopsy you see the bullet is intraepidermal and when you go on high power you see a lot of eos so this is an example of spongiotic blistering diseases the second example we have those blister formation at the palms and when you do the biopsy again you see the blister formation intraepidermal so this is a palmoplantar pustulosis Next one is we have those blister formation. They look like acne, but uh, when you go on the biopsy, there is a lot of uh, inflammatory cells, mixed inflammatory cells. And, they, and here you don't see a lot of bacteria, although like it looks ulcerated or empitogenized, but there is, there is no bacteria. Uh, in addition, we see parakeratosis and neutrophils exocytosis into the epidermis and also the dermis uh, in addition to uh, spongio, uh, spongiform and acanthosis because of the uh, formation uh, that happens uh, it, at the epidermis level there is like hyperplasia trying to uh, heal the skin so if you look into the clinical history of those patients most commonly you will see autoimmune disease. In this case is IgA nephropathy and Sjogren's syndrome. So this is a microbial pustulosis associated with autoimmune disease. In this example we see here uh, this patient's uh, leg involved with erythematous uh, lesion, uh, ulcerated, and if you look on high power you see a spongiosis with uh, mixed inflammatory cells erosions and this is uh, erosive pustular dermatosis of the leg. So we finish the first two groups and then we move the third level is the suprabasilar or above the basal layer blisters. In this group uh, the most common one we see is pemphigus uh, vulgaris. In this group we will see acantholysis and uh, usually involves the adnexal structures. The cell type is usually uh, neutrophils and eosinophils uh, sometimes, and the diff will be very helpful to uh, diagnose those lesions, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. Perfigos vegetans, usually we see spongiosis, and the cell type is usually eosinophils, but also the mixed uh, cellularity is also... Uh, found in, in those cases. DIFF also is helpful to diagnose those cases and I will mention the results in a little bit. A paraneoplastic pemphigus, this is, has the unique features of the EM. It's like somebody had like a erythema multiforme bad reaction. In addition to the pemphigus vulgaris uh, type of uh, features that we see. Rarely also we can see in those lesions the uh, bullous pemphigoid uh, features. There were also some reports about uh, seeing the lichenoid reaction pattern, the vacuolar changes in the basal cell layer. Uh, Haley Haley, Darriers and Grovers, I want you to think of these three as like one group, but there is like uh, more severe than uh, others like one of them is more severe than the other two groups and uh, hopefully I will be able to help you like to differentiate between the uh, the three so in Haley Haley in addition to the all of them they have the suprabasilar blisters Haley Haley has a cantholysis that uh, usually is uh, described as like you have a brick wall that has uh, the bricks are separated from each other because of the acantholysis. If you do, uh, diff usually is negative in those lesions and usually the, the split is severe, like you have wide area of split, a split. In addition to the clinical features, obviously, like I'm not disregarding those, but I'm saying like if you have this on exam question that they didn't give you the 
a clinical information or if you have biopsy that came without clinical information, those features might help you. Darriere's disease is, we see acantholysis, but here uh, the acantholysis is white. The unique feature of Darriere's disease uh, is the disc keratosis, we'll talk about this, and the thick uh, keratin plugs. Grover's, uh, the acantholysis is narrower than Darriere's, also has uh, disc keratosis, but the keratin plugs is uh, usually thinner than the ones that happen in Darriere's and the hair involvement in Grover's disease. Acantholytic solar uh, keratosis, the, in addition to the acantholysis that we see in, in the previous conditions, here the unique feature is the dysplasia. It's like actinic keratosis where you see like the dysplastic cells at the base, uh, basal cell layer. In this uh, disease, we see dysplastic cells in addition to uh, solar elastosis. So first example, we see here some bullet formation uh, in the oral cavity in addition to the trunk. When you look into the histology, uh, the blister formation is uh, suprabasal. And then when you do diff, has this net-like pattern of IgG and C3. Uh, they describe those uh, as the tombstone because they look like the tombstone as the uh, epithelium is uh, separated from each other because of the acantholysis and uh, usually we have also follicular extension in, the, in these lesions and we have superficial perivascular and interstitial inflammation of lymphocytes or, and eosinophils. Uh, so this is pemphigus vulgaris. Uh, the next one, we have those lesions that they look like vegetative lesions of the groin of this patient. And when you look on histology, you will see uh, there is like epidermal acanthosis with uh, eosinophils and neutrophils infiltrate. If you do uh, diff staining, you will see IgG and IgA. Uh, rarely you see C3 uh, positive in the epidermis. So this is pemphigus vegetans. Uh, in this examples, you see the oral involvement is like a drug reaction or infection reaction. And in addition to the same features we said we see in pemphigus vulgaris, if you look here, the dismoglyene uh, 3 is positive, and this is uh, paraneoplastic pemphigus. Of course, you have to make this diagnosis in connection with the clinical history. In this example, we see eruption, uh, widespread eruption of the uh, papular uh, lesions. And then when you look into the histology, you will see the suprabasal cleft, but looks like in very narrow area. Uh, if you look on high power, you will identify those cells that they look round uh, and also they, there are these cells that they look kind of elongated with uh, dark nuclei. So we call these uh, cells uh, round bodies or the French uh, round uh, name is rond. And coron in French means round bodies. And we see here the other feature is those elongated uh, cells. Uh, they, they are named as grain because they look like a grain of wheat elongated with this uh, kind of like the nuclei is the split in the middle. So these dyskeratotic cells is unique for, for this condition. And this is transient acantholytic dermatosis or a Grover's disease. Uh, the second condition that is similar to Grover's disease where you see in addition uh, to the nail malformation, we see these uh, lesions of the leg and the trunk. And when you look at the biopsy, the split uh, looks wider, uh, suprabasal, and also we have the skeratosis uh, cells at the top. So this is the uh, uh, Darriere disease. It was named after a French pathologist and dermatologist, uh, well-known Darriere. He was uh, named as the father of modern dermatology in France. And usually this disease 
happens because of ATP uh, 2A2 gene abnormality and usually it tends also to involve the uh, follicles. Autosomal dominant uh, condition, uh, it will help you if family history is included. The third uh, condition that is similar to Grover's and Darier is the Haley-Haley disease. And here in, in the axilla, you see erythematous lesion, wide spread with blister formation. If you look at the biopsy, you will see those cells that a acantholytic and those kind of round acantholytic epidermis where the split is also supra basilar, and this is Haley Haley disease or familial behind pemphigus. Usually it happens because of insufficiency of ATP 2C1 uh, that cause mutation in chromosome 3, and this mutation caused the uh, malformation of the intercellular dysmosomes, which caused this acantholysis. So we finished the first three levels and now we move to the sub-epidermal level or uh, below the epidermis. And this is, uh, the book divides those into uh, different groups, depends on the cell type. So the first group is the passicellular or with little inflammation. As you see, there are a lot of conditions. We will not be able to cover uh, all of them, but uh, some of them like kind of uh, intuitive or straightforward if you if you know the clinical history uh, you will be able to make that diagnosis but I want to discuss some of them that are commonly tested on the uh, certification exams and also you will encounter in your clinical practice the first one is epidermolysis bullosa those are a group of disease that in the clinical history, the patient will describe blisters after minor trauma. And usually on h and &E, you will not be able to tell the difference between all of them. Uh, but usually the gold standard diagnosis is the electron microscopy. And uh, we will mention those in a little bit. Porphyria cutanea tarda is very common uh, and also is uh, easy to make diagnosis if you have uh, suspicion uh, clinically. A uh, bullous pamphigoid, uh, the cell poor type, we will discuss bullous pamphigoid in the eosinophilic group, but uh, there is like the cell uh, poor type is usually uh, found here. Uh, the burns and cryotherapy, as you know, like burns will cause blisters. Usually you will see necrotic epidermis and also uh, uh, one of the most common features you will see on burns uh, and cryotherapy is the fusion of collagen bundles in the upper uh, epidermis. Uh, epidermolysis bullosa, those are groups of disease that happen because of autosomal dominant or recessive mutations. And uh, there are four types, the, the simplex, the dystrophic, and the junctional. And the Kindler syndrome, we, we talked about this in the previous lecture uh, where we talked about piculodermas. This is the congenital bullous uh, type of uh, poculoderma. So I'll give you just uh, two examples here. In, in this group, this is the simplex type, and it happens because of absence of keratin 4 and 14 since birth. When you look into the histology, in addition to the clinical uh, picture, you will see the, the bullous formation is uh, subepidermis. This is also another example of uh, EB, where you see those lesion dystrophic uh, legs, and usually uh, is acquired condition, doesn't happen because of mutation, and because of autoimmune response against uh, type 7 collagen. So basement membrane has two types of collagen. The most common one people know is type 4. This is close to the epidermis. And type 7 is close to the dermis. So this condition happens because of autoantibody that attacks that uh, type 7 collagen. So these lesions, uh, when you see in clinic, those patients will tell you that they have those blister formation when they have them, 
usually they heal and then they uh, go back again and they burst. If they go to the sun is their nightmare. They These lesions worsen when they are exposed to the sunlight. And when you look into the histology, the histology is very unique. You see the blister formation, the space is uh, supra epidermis and when you look into the dermis, the dermal papilla is uh, completely preserved. So when you do PAS staining, you will see uh, uh, the vessel formation is highlighted by this thick pink uh, color and usually those are auto, uh, um, immunoglobulin uh, formation that highlighted by a PAS. Another thing you see at the roof of the bullet is this uh, uh, cute sign of uh, uh, caterpillar bodies where the, the cells make like this kind of segmented eosinophilic uh, PAS uh, positive uh, globules. So this is Porphyria cutanea tarda. So we finished those uh, groups, the posse cellular, and then we move to the group that happens be, uh, with or in association with eosinophils. Uh, the, the most common one is the bullous pamphigoid, and then we have the pregnancy-related pamphigoid, and then we have the arthropod and drug reaction. If you remember when we spoke in the spongiotic reaction pattern, we said that when the spongiosis is very severe, it can cause a blister formation. So always when you see a blister or vesicle formation, you have to rule out uh, those two conditions. Epidermolysis bullosa also happens uh, with, uh, in association with eosinophils. So the first example, we see these bullae formation, uh, angry looking uh, bullae formation on this uh, poor patient. And then the uh, bullet formation is basically subepidermal. When you do diff staining, the IgG formation will highlight the basement membrane in linear fashion. So this is uh, BP or bullous pamphigoid. And then uh, the same features we see in uh, with pregnancy uh, in pamphigoid uh, gestationes, or sometimes it's called herpes uh, pamphigoid. So we finish the, the group that happens with eosinophils and we move on to the, the ones that happen with neutrophils. The most common one is DH and also we have other conditions we will mention also. Uh, sweet syndrome is, is common, uh, tested on, on exams and although it's very rare uh, condition. So the first uh, uh, disease, uh, as you see here, those uh, itchy, they look uh, uh, crusted lesions on the elbow and the knees. Sometimes we have these blister formation. When you do uh, the staining, usually you see granular IgA uh, deposits in the basement membrane. So this is uh, DH or dermatitis herptiformis. The other condition also we see the same uh, kind of like uh, features the suprabasal uh, bullet formation, but here uh, the, the IgA formation will be linear to the basement membrane. So this is linear IgA. In this condition, we see those blistering formation at the back and the neck. And when you look at the biopsy, it will look very heavily involved with neutrophils except for the epidermis and uh, usually uh, upper and mid dermis uh, with uh, heavy involvement of neutrophils. So this is a uh, sweet syndrome. So we finished uh, most of those categories. I still have just one uh, disease I wanna show you, but the rest of the, those conditions uh, are similar to the ones we discussed uh, before with some uh, unique features clinically. If you, if you have the clinical information, uh, most commonly you will be able to uh, make the diagnosis. So uh, this condition, we see this, uh, these lesions, blister formation, 
in on biopsy you see this uh, blister formation is uh, subepidermal and also we we have those inf uh, infiltrate blue cells heavy infiltrate so this is uh, bullous mastocytosis all these cells are mast cells and uh, finally i'll leave you with this nice table uh, for some of you who always uh, ask me to include tables in my presentation uh, this is for you. Uh, you can pause the video and review uh, those diseases we, we have talked about. And I finished uh, the chapter now. I will move on to show you uh, some examples under the microscope. Uh, I would like to mention, give credit to Path Presenter, very nice uh, website. One of our residents uh, mentioned it to me and uh, I, I used it for this lecture to teach them uh, it has a lot of cases obviously you, you have to do your homework by finding the clues for the diagnosis but has a lot of slides uh, uploaded and you can uh, search this website for different diagnoses so uh, feel free to uh, check it out it's free for public you just have to create an account and then you can uh, use it and you can benefit from uh, those uh, features so the first example, we have uh, this lesion where we see the bulle formation is uh, a corneal or subcorneal. And when you look into the bulle formation, you will see on high power neutrophils and gram positive cocci. So the diagnosis is impetigo. The second uh, example also, we have this bullet formation up high looks like uh, subcorneal or uh, up high in the epidermis. In addition, we have a campholysis. So the diagnosis is pomphigus foliaceus. The third example, we have this bullet formation and it looks like intraepidermal bullet formation, very large bullet formation. So if we go on high power, we see ballooning degeneration. And it reminds us of the, uh, if you have seen the, if you have a pathology training, probably you already identified this diagnosis. So this is herpes. Next example, we have here a punch biopsy with the, the epidermis, uh, we have a bulle formation or a split acantholysis. If we go on high power, we identify the split is suprabasal. And we have these cells. If we go on high power, we can identify those round cells. And also we can identify those grains. So we said those, we call them coarse rounds or rounds bodies and grains. So this is Grover's disease or transient acantholytic dermatosis. The next example in the same category, so if this is a shave biopsy and we have a split in these areas on this power. If we go on high power, you can identify that there is some parakeratosis here and then the split is suprabasal or suprabasilar with acantholysis so if we go on high power you will see the uh, round bodies and the dyskeratotic cells but the the split is wider than the one we saw before so this is Darrier's disease the third uh, example in the same category, in this punch biopsy, you, you see here we have a split formation and it looks like suprabasal on this power and wide with acantholysis. These cells, they look very uh, separated from each other and we say that the reason is because the dysmosomes are mutated uh, on chromosome 3 and uh, we have this acantholysis uh, 
and this is Haley Haley disease or familial benign uh, pamphigus. These two examples I included together to give you the difference. Here we see the bullet formation is subepidermal and the cell type is eosinophils, whereas here we see the bullet formation is suprabasal and we have this tombstone pattern. So this is pamphigus vulgaris and this is bullus pamphigoid. In the next example we have bullet formation subepidermal. It looks like we don't have any cell type, so this is passi cellular. If we go on high power, we see the dermal papillae is preserved. And if you look here, you will see this sign of caterpillar uh, sign where you see the, the cells is making eosinophilic and uh, kind of chain like or sequence like. So this is Porphyria cutanea tarda. If you do, uh, we said if you do PAS staining, those vessels will be highlighted by thick hyaline uh, uh, pink material of uh, immunoglobulin uh, that is positive for PAS. So this is my lecture. I hope uh, it's helpful to you. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, uh, feel free to uh, uh, shoot me on my Twitter account and uh, I hope those lectures are helping you to learn dermatopathology.